Because his childless aunt was an excellent what is called matchmaker, and mixed a great deal with power-possessing beings, and secondly, because when by age he was approaching the threshold of the being of a responsible being, he received on his birthday a gift of a book entitled Manual of Bonton and Love Letter Writing. Being materially secure and therefore quite free, thanks to an inheritance left him by his uncle, a former pawn shop proprietor, he, out of boredom, compiled a massive and erudite work in which he spun out, concerning the origin of these apes, an elaborate theory with every kind of logical proof. But of course, with such logical proofs as could be perceived and crystallized only in the reasons of those freaks who have taken your fancy. This Menit Kel then proved by his theory that these fellow apes of theirs had descended neither more nor less than from what are called people who became wild. And the other terrestrial beings of that period, as it had already become proper to them, implicitly believed this Auntie's darling without any essence criticism whatsoever. And from that time on, this question, which had then agitated the strange reason of your favorites, became a subject of discussion and fantasying, and existed right up to what is called the seventh in turn great general planetary process of reciprocal destruction. Thanks to this maleficent idea, there was even fixed in the instincts of most of these unfortunates of that period still another abnormal what is called dictatory factor, which began to engender in their common presences the false feeling that these ape beings were presumably sacred, and the abnormal factor engendering this sacrilegious impulse, also passing by inheritance from generation to generation, has reached the instincts of very many beings even at the present time. This false idea that arose and was fixed there owing to the said pawn shop progeny existed during nearly two of their centuries and became an inseparable part of the reason of the majority of them and only various events proceeding from the mentioned general planetary process effaced it until it ultimately completely disappeared from their common presences but when what is called their cultured existence was concentrated on the continent named Europe and when the time of the maximum intense manifestation of the peculiar illness there named to Wiseacre had again come round, which illness, by the way, had already long before become subject to the fundamental cosmic law of Heptaparaparshanak, according to which it had, in respect of intensity, also to function with a certain periodicity, then, to the grief of the three brain beings of the whole of the universe, that ape question, namely the question who is descended from whom, again arose, and having become crystallized, again became a part of the presence of the abnormal reason of your favorites. The stimulus for the revival there of this ape question was this time also a learned being, and of course also great, but now a learned being of quite a new formation, namely Darwin. And this great learned being, basing his theory on that same logic of theirs, began to prove exactly the opposite of what Manitkel had said, namely that it was they themselves who were descended from these Mr. Apes. And as for the objective reality of the theories of both these great terrestrial learned beings, I am reminded of one of the wise sayings of our esteemed Mullah Nazaruddin, namely, they were both very successful, though of course not without luck, in finding the authentic godmother of the incomparable Shahrazad on an old dunghill. 
In any case, you must know and bear in mind that for many centuries just this question among similar ephemeral questions has provided material for the kind of mentation which is considered among your favorites as the highest manifestation of reason. These favorites of yours would, in my opinion, get quite a correct answer to this question which always excites them. That is the question, how the apes arose. If they were able, in the given case, to apply one of these sayings again of our dear Mullah Nazaruddin, who on many occasions used to say, the cause of every misunderstanding must be sought only in women. If they had attempted the solution of this enigmatic question with that wisdom of his, then perhaps they would have finally discovered whence and how these countrymen of theirs had originated. As this question of the genealogy of these apes there is indeed exceedingly abstruse and unusual, I shall inform your reason about this also as far as possible from every aspect. In fact, neither have they descended from apes, nor have apes descended from them. But the cause of the origin of these apes is in this case, just as in every other misunderstanding there, also their women. I must tell you first of all that the species of terrestrial ape beings now arising there under several different exterior forms never existed at all before the second Transalpalnian perturbation. Only afterwards did the genealogy of their species begin. The causes of the arising of this misconceived being as well as the cause of all the other events more or less serious in an objective sense, which occur on the surface of that ill-fated planet, ensue from two sources, totally independent of each other. The first of them, as always, was the same lack of foresight on the part of certain most high, most very saintly cosmic individuals. And the second was, in the given case, also the same abnormal conditions of ordinary being existence established by them themselves. The point is that when the second Transapalnian perturbation occurred to that ill-fated planet, then besides its chief continent Atlantis, many other large and small terra firmas entered within the planet. And in their place, new terra firmas appeared on the surface of the planet. These displacements of the parts of the common presence of that ill-fated planet then continued for several days with repeated planetary tremors and with such manifestations as could not fail to evoke terror in the consciousness and feelings of beings of every kind. During that same period, Many of your three-brained favorites who chanced to survive together with various one-brained and two-brained beings of other forms unexpectedly struck upon other newly formed terra firmas in entirely new places unfamiliar to them. It was just at this period that many of these strange Kezchapmartnian three-brained beings of active and passive sex, or as they say, men and women, were compelled to exist for some years there apart, that is to say, without the opposite sex. Before relating how this then further occurred, I must explain to you a little more in detail concerning that sacred substance which is the final result of the evolving transformations of every kind of being food formed in the presence of every being without distinction of brain system. This sacred substance, which arises in the presences of beings of every kind, is almost everywhere called Exioihari, but your favorites on the planet Earth call it sperm. Thanks to the all-gracious foresight and command of our common Father and Creator, and according to the 